Good evening, friends. Good evening, Father. Let us say the Angelus together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. We are to be your bread of life, Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh. And the Word of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O oh, forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the shall be the world without an May the divine assistance always remain with us Amen. and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. We take our opening hymn, hymn number one, a lamb for our steps has been given. Number, hymn number one. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather here this Holy mm -hmm. Eucharist, let's offer up all our prayers and intentions. So many prayer requests we've been receiving for people who are sick in the hospitals, for death anniversaries. We lift up every prayer this moment. Today we also pray in a very special way for Deacon Clifton. I hope you are, I'm not announcing the good news, the good news Father George will announce when the time comes. But today, Deacon Clifton celebrates his one year of his uh, document anniversary as a deacon. That is also and good news. <laughs> that is also good news. So, uh, one year back, he was ordained as a deacon and he has celebrated this entire year so beautifully in our parish helping out with the sacramental work, with youth ministry, he's been very good with the youth, confirmation students, and he's always been available, therefore he continues to remain in our parish. We don't want to let him go so soon, but uh, we are very happy, and we want to pray today in a very special way, that as he continues to wait for that day of his ordination, that God will continue to bless him with that same zeal and enthusiasm, and we pray for all his classmates too at this moment, they too celebrate this great day. Let's pray that that day will be closed for them. So we remember Deacon Clifton and all his classmates today in a very special way. My dear friends, we also uh, uh, offer this Mass as a requiem Mass for the soul of Master Sheldon Anthony, a young boy, 18 years old. Uh, who passed away on the 24th of July in Nala Supara. 
He is the son of Alwyn and Manisha, residing at plot number 16, Mahara Colony, Mulun East. We remember and pray for this family in a very special way, a sickness that uh, was recently discovered. They tried their best. I remember this couple, my friends, in a very special way because I got their, their marriage rectified three years ago, got the children baptized, both uh, Sheldon and his brother Alex. And his family was very close, but a death like this, the mother and the father are really shaken apart. But I just spoke to the mother yesterday, and on behalf of all the fathers, we offered our condolences to her. She said, Father, I really do not know uh, what has happened, but I believe that he is in the best place. He is with God. Yes, friends, let's pray. So many of us, so many mothers have lost their young ones. Let's pray just like this mother who is so much filled with faith that her son Sheldon is with God and is the most beautiful place. We remember this family in a very special way at the Holy Eucharist. And for the times that we have failed in God, far away from God, let us ask Him for His mercy and pardon. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, bless Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may He forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord said to me, Say this word to the people. Tears flood my eyes night and day unceasingly, since a crushing blow falls on the daughter of my people, a most grievous injury. If I go to the countryside, there lie men killed by the sword. If I go into the city, I see people sick with hunger. Even prophets and priests plough the land. They are at their wit's end. Have you rejected Judah altogether? Does your very soul revolt at Zion? Why have you struck us down without hope of cure? We were hoping for peace. No good came of it. For the moment of cure, nothing but terror. Lord, 
we do confess our wickedness and our father's guilt. We have indeed sinned against you. For your name's sake, do not reject us. Do not dishonor the throne of your glory. Remember us. Do not break your covenant with us. Can any of the pagan nothings make it rain? Can the heavens produce showers? No, it is you, Lord. Our, o our God, you are our hope, since it is you who do all this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. Rescue us, Lord, for the glory of your name. Can you listen? Rescue us, Lord, for the glory of your name. Together. Rescue us, Lord, for the glory of your name. Do not hold the guilt of our fathers against us. Let your compassion hasten to meet us. For we are depths of distress, for we are in the depths of distress. Rescue us, Lord, for the glory of your name. O God, our Savior, come to our help. Come for the sake of the glory of your name. Sins. Rescue us for the sake of your name. The sower of the good seed is the son of man, the darnel, the subjects of the evil one. The field is the world, the good seed is the subjects of the kingdom, the enemy who sowed them, the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, the reaper are the angels. Well then, just as the darnel is gathered up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of time. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that provoke offences, and all who do evil, and throw them into the blazing furnace, 
where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then the virtuous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Listen, anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, each of us in our lives have periods of fertility and periods of famine. Periods when things go exceedingly well and other periods when things are going absolutely badly. The trick or the purpose of our Christian life is to see what our reaction towards God is in our times of fertility and in our times of famine. And it could be one of these four options. The first one could be whether it is fertile time or whether it is famine time, we are not bothered much about God. We are too lost in our own worlds. A good example would be someone who is like an atheist, who does not bother too much about God. The second option is, in times of fertility, in good times, their hope and trust is great in God. But when the famine comes, they find it very difficult to trust or to believe in God or to wait on the Lord. That's the second option. The third option is, during periods of fertility, when everything is going on well, we don't think too much about God. And only when everything is lost and the world is almost coming to an end, that is when we come running towards God, we realize how much we need God in our lives. And the last, which I suppose is hardly any of us, very few of us, perhaps only Prophet Jeremiah, is in periods of fertility or in periods of famine, our hope and our trust and our belief is steadfast onto God. In the Old Testament, Israel, in the first reading as we heard, follows the third option. When everything is going well for Israel, Israel isn't too concerned about Yahweh. When they are, for us, our concerns would be work, money and things like that. But in Israel, there was only one concern. Is the rain coming? Are our crops growing? Are we going to get a great harvest? And as long as these rains kept coming, they were, they were busy with their own lives. But in the first reading, we hear that God has brought upon a great famine onto the land. And this famine, like our COVID-19, has upset all the normals of their life, has upset the entire system so badly that the reading says that priests and prophets are plowing the field. You know, I just remember that father was telling us during the lockdown, the first two months when I was not here, I was at home, the poor fathers were also watering the plants around the place. So they had become even gardeners in that sense. But you see, a uh, famine that came in Israel upset the entire order of the system. And this reading that we hear in the first reading is actually a lament by the people, also by the prophet, also a lament by God in that sense. They are all crying about this situation, about this famine. But the beauty is that thankfully, at least now, during this famine, Israel realizes their need for God. When they didn't go to Yahweh, they went to these fertility gods, very popularly Baal and Asherah. Baal was known as the god of the storm, Asherah, the goddess of the earth. And if these two gods were happy and they were appeased, then the land would be fertile and it would grow crops. This was their belief system by and large. And no matter in this famine, how much they prayed to their Baals and Asherahs, no rain came. Which was when they realized, and they said these words that Father read, and I'll just repeat it. Can any of the pagan nothings make it rain? Can the heavens produce showers? No, it is you, Lord, O God, who are our hope, since it is you who do all this. No matter what you are going through in your life today, and then certainly COVID-19 has made sure that our lives are pretty much upset, the call of the Lord is to be steadfast even in these times. What the Lord is desiring of us is not to punish us, that these evil things don't happen to punish us, but to make us steadfast in the Lord, to make us strong in the Lord, that our hope is in Him and in Him alone. As Father mentioned, and thank you for all of you for praying for me on this special day, because it is a very special day, because in the past 60 years of our seminary, there has been no batch as a batch, any diaconate batch has completed a full year. They all did so well that we, they would get ordained within a within six months period, which is the official period. Perhaps the Lord is testing us a little bit more uh, and has extended it to almost another six months, which has almost become a year of our doing our diaconate ministry. And I remember four months back, 
when we started playing this cat and mouse game when the uh, date would kept keep getting extended i as well as all of my bachelors we were our normals were very upset it you know we suddenly experienced are we were we were in a fertile period now suddenly we are thrown into the famine and our plans have got disrupted all our ordination plans also our desire to get ordained as we've seen the eight batches of our seniors get ordained it upset our plans but i must tell you that perhaps for the first time in my life when a famine like this has come and a problem like this has come in my life my response to the lord was so much more positive than i would have actually hoped and i remember immediately after the first week i did not feel the sense of being weighed down or or, or this unknown feeling coming into me when is this day going to happen why is that to happen to us is the lord punishing us are we going to be bad trees tomorrow is this some sign that the lord is is calling us so question that i'm sure you have asked in your own life but i experienced perhaps like the first reading says a deep peace of the lord the lord i remember these words one day when i was praying that the lord i felt inspiring me telling me that you are priests for me is it not only fair then that i decide the date i decide the time i decide the place i decide the number of guests is it not fair then if you are a priest of me that i get to choose these and not maybe a seminary or other 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 realities and so i remember from that day on i decided that i'm still a deacon i'm still a, a cleric in that sense so continue with whatever work i can do in the best way that i can so i want to thank you for your prayers and i want to assure you also of my own especially in this time that you are going through a difficult time or a difficult period like israel let us have the courage to come back to him to realize that god is really god and to repent of all the times where we have failed him my brothers and sisters as we offer this bread and wine to the lord i invite you at this moment to offer up your own problems your own difficulties as the lord is calling us back to him let's offer up anything that's worrying us right now that's disturbing us maybe a sickness that's there the lord is here with us he wants us to surrender everything to him let's give it to the lord because he is a god who knows us He is a God who loves us, and as we offer this bread and wine, offer up every anything that you are worried right now, and the Lord will set you free. Bless thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless thy Lord God forever. Bless thy Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become for us our spiritual drink bless thy Lord God forever Dear you know, brothers and sisters my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord and Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, 
Yet a thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our place is at nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory said in resurrection, we offer you all the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring on to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Cardinal Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Sheldon Anthony, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep with the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy 
welcome them into the light of your face. We remember and pray for all those who died in our families and all those who need our prayers, especially the lonely, the depressed, people who are struggling because of this COVID-19. Let's remember and pray for all of them in a very special way. Let's also pray for those having financial problems, for those who have lost their jobs, that they may get a job soon, for those who are struggling in their married life, that the God of peace will enter into their families. And let's also pray for those celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries today. We pray that the Lord will bless all of them to good health and that He will continue to bless them with the gifts of faith, hope and love. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced with eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we say the Lord's Prayer together, the Lord is inviting us to turn back to Him. And these are moments in life when we can experience God very closely, very tenderly, very passionately. And as we say the Lord's Prayer together, let's believe that this God of ours will answer every prayer that we bring before Him. And together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the perfect mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we obey the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Pray the Lord wants to bless each and every one of us, wants to bless all our families, the peace of Christ. So let us offer each other a very peaceful sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, if you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, if you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, if you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter my room, but when we say the word, my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe 
that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Communion and defend. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Psalm 102, verse 2. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for healing and protection from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. We pray for the doctors, nurses and attendants. Protect them. Bless those doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they may take the appropriate steps for the good of the people. O merciful God, keep us safe and give us your peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our final hymn, hymn number 584, Who Shall Separate Us from the Love of Christ? 584.
you know, I should not say this because it will sound maybe a little unkind. We are quite happy that he's still a deacon. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have missed him. He would surely have not been here just now with us. Unless, of course, there were transfers and he came as an additional priest to us. Oh. <laughs> on the 1st of June. But I want to tell you, as much as we love him and are so happy that he is here, he is happy to be with us. Uh, you know, he had the option of staying at home. He had the option of being with his mom and dad, which he missed for the last eight years of his seminary life. But he chose to come and be here with us, uh, help us with our masses, preach to us, be part of our community, uh, get involved already with the confirmation classes and so on. Uh, thank you Clifton for your service to our parish for this whole year as a deacon of course you came to us much before you were ordained a deacon you came in June and uh, 28th of July you came to us as a deacon uh, we're glad and we want to congratulate you for this yes a milestone in your life of completing one year as the clergy you know, in the Eucharistic prayer, we pray for the Holy Father, bishops, and clergy. And he is clergy already. Every deacon is part of being a clergy. So while we thank him, we uh, congratulate him, also we pray that soon he may be a priest too. So, you know that he is very active on the Instagram and he's been doing a great job uh, guiding youth particularly on Instagram. You can go back to his Instagram account and see the wonderful work that he has done. His Instagram account is at the rate Clifton underscore DN. That's for Deacon. Now when you write Clifton, make sure it is double F. And he very, he very proudly say that he said Clifton with double F. So Instagram account at the rate Clifton underscore D N. Let's sing now. Congratulations. This one year has been a very fertile period in my life. So uh, please do continue your prayers for me as well as uh, my other five batchmates. Uh, thank you. God bless.